Hello, you all right? Yeah, good, thanks. Just, we've got a bus. <laughs> We're going, for the people who are listening and not and watching the video, we have a, a ceramic, uh, what, it's one of those camper van things, isn't it? I know. We call it the bus. Something hide, we... hide the biscuits behind. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Shh, don't tell no people biscuits. about the biscuits. So two or three weeks ago, I was at a conference about innovation and technology. Um, and it was, it ran for a couple of days. Um, I wasn't speaking, wasn't, you know, just sitting there listening. It was quite interesting. Some really innovation, innovative software and stuff coming up. Do you um, hope so? I know. Well, at a conference like that. <laughs> and um, throughout both days, there were a number of, not quite back to back, but close to kind of back to back half hour presentations from people saying what they've been doing, presenting their stuff, um, and about how, particularly about how industry can learn from um, these new up and coming um, kind of fast paced innovation companies. And it struck me about lunchtime on day two that basically everybody was saying the same thing in their presentation. And I'd listened to, to the same presentation more or less over and over and over again. And so I actually wrote down five things that I thought everybody said in these um, presentations. I thought we could talk about it today. So, I, I, well, before you go, go on, on to that, because I, I think it's really interesting. So you, you went on to a two-day two conference. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about innovation. Mm -hmm. So you probably had, what, 10 people speaking over the two days? Um, no, it was more than that. Okay, 10 it, to 15 Yeah, people. I think there was about... Six or eight per day, yeah. Okay, so call it a dozen people mm -hmm. who between them came up with... It was like... Independently came up with... Independently, yeah. There was no theme given for their topics that they right. were talking about. It was just, you know, present what you're doing, what you've learned from it, and what other people can learn from your journey. So there's a couple of things you could take from that immediately. One, there's not that much new out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's new technology, but the way that you work's not that new. Sure. Or that from completely different directions, perspectives, cultures, approaches, people have stumbled upon or recognised, mm. probably more accurately... Commonality. Commonalities, mm. which is quite... It's quite nice, that, isn't it? It is. And what was interesting is these people who were presenting, they not only were from different com companies, they were from different countries okay. and different cultures, different languages, and we still kind of distilling it down to these key themes that came up. There's, there's some interesting research around that, about how research has been done by different people at similar times, but because of people's backgrounds, for mm. instance, one set of research has been dismissed over somebody else's. So, for instance, if a piece of research has been done by the I was about to say established establishment, but by, by, by <laughs> a, a, a recognised body, mm. say in England, just for example, and then somebody from an unrecognised body or an independent has come up with exactly the same conclusions, theirs is completely dismissed, mm. totally, because it's not come from the same it's going yeah. off topic here slightly. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's that quite, credibility. It's that it? credibility piece, but also it's only credibility in the eye of the holder mm -hmm. of the credibility mm. does, does that make sense yeah. so if you if, if we're told that we're the controlling body then anything that comes out of our house must be truth yeah if something comes out of somebody else's house that's not part of the body even though it's the same evident mm. material it can't be the truth yeah so it's it's really gratifying to see that that's mm. perhaps not always true not always true yeah, so yeah, interesting. Yeah. number one that um, came out was um, to surround yourself with multidisciplinary teams in your company from all levels to get varied ideas and input. So if you're a small company, a small business, entrepreneur, solopreneur, it yep. might not be your team within your company. It might be um, trusted advisors you know, family, so, friends, so what, whatever. So what you're talking about here is who you hang around with. Matt. Yeah, basically. Yeah. But, it, but, but not just like... Not a, people like you. Yeah, to yeah. get different opinions. Yeah. And sometimes the blindingly obvious you're blinkered to because you're so 
in it every day and then you know the cleaner comes along and goes why would you do it like that do, do you know it, 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 I have to be careful here a little bit but with with Kay's business where she's at she's got a particular skill set her background experience and qualifications etc and accountancy and she works for a professional firm uh, that is um, I have to be a little bit careful but the, the, the vast majority of uh, decision makers in the business are lawyers mm. and she about two years ago 18 months ago became a member of the senior leadership team and, and it's been made really clear to her that one of the reasons she got the role over and above a couple of other people was because she's not a lawyer mm. and I, I, I think that's brilliant I think because she does give a bring a hugely different perspective to yeah. some of the decision making that has to happen the the other thing where i think this is really relevant and i've, I've seen with with kay specifically uh is that they've introduced something called a reverse mentoring scheme which okay. I, th- I think is fascinating so what what they do is that you know so kay's on the senior leadership team for you know one of the key departments um in the business and she's been given a junior from a different department so mm-hmm. someone who's only been in the business six eight months and it's the the the, the 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 incumbent the new person if you like the junior i can't think of a better word okay but the, the junior's role to mentor k okay to so that to deliberately create a situation where k is exposed to remembering what it's like to on the shop floor on the shop floor yeah. to start the business new and all the rest of it um she's learned so much about this girl's um background culturally traditionally what her expectations are and it's just completely opened up her mm. eyes to what she'd known but had forgotten mm-hmm. but also because of her background she wouldn't have had to experience yeah. coming into that sort of professional world. Yeah. Does, that, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, so it's been yeah. a really healthy exercise, and obviously everybody in the business has done it. So you've yeah. got all these little quiet coffee chats. With yeah, no, it's a really interesting way to, to look at it. The thing that struck me when I'm relating that back to small business as well is it doesn't necessarily <laughs> have to be your team. It no. could be your customers Yes, and about really getting to know them and understanding we we talked about this the other week but mm. understanding what their actual needs are how they're feeling and where what's driving their behavior will help influence where your business should go um for the better i think but but the the point overall was you know don't just rely on your your c level management team making the decisions because people who are writing the software or cleaning you're not necessarily cleaning the building but you know who are i don't know doing the accounts or doing well, the marketing you don't know what you see through the windows exactly <laughs> but this, the, the point this is the point is yeah. that all of these different roles make up your whole business mm. they all play a part they all have an opinion doesn't matter at this point whether you think it's the right or wrong opinion or, or just an opinion but they feed into it to make a greater whole well there's You've probably watched it, Undercover Boss, mm-hmm. where you get the owners, CEOs, yeah. managing directors, whatever, founders of large, usually, typically very, very large organisations, yeah. and they go into, and they do the shop floor thing, don't they? Mm-hmm. But actually, you're talking about doing this openly, mm-hmm. with everybody's permission, if you like, and everybody's knowledge. And and I think you're right, you know, Matthew Sire talks about this a lot with Rebel Ideas, which mm-hmm. I think is a, it's a fantastic book. Um, also, Black Box Thinking, where he first starts to touch upon it as a principle and then I think Rebel Ideas really took it on to another level but there's mm. this whole principle of cognitive diversity yeah and it's too easy for us you know people like people they like yeah and people like people they like that are like them yeah and and it's too easy to gravitate to other people like you because it reinforces your yeah. sense but of you get, self you, you're in a room with yes men then you are completely you create your own echo chambers and we mm. do it we do it in every aspect of, mm-hmm. our, of our lives, business owners hang out with business owners. That's fine. But hang out with business owners from different industries. Hang out with business owners at different levels. Those yeah. are, You can learn just as much from somebody starting out mm-hmm. as you can somebody who's been in business 30 years, and 40 years. it's good to be challenged. It's, it's necessary to be challenged mm. to grow. Yeah. 
because if if you're not challenged whilst you're going on any journey, whether mm. that's a sporting journey, a business journey, an academic journey, you don't learn. No. And if you're always challenged the same way by the same people, by the same sources, you end up just being a mouthpiece for that source of the challenge. Mm. Being challenged f- in, in different ways, through different mediums, by different people from different cultures and different traditions opens your mind up to the possibilities mm. that you wouldn't have thought of if you only had a single source yeah. of that, that challenge. It makes me think of that quote, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Yeah. If you keep doing the same thing and there's no variety, no fresh ideas or thoughts or challenges in there, you're just going to keep plodding. Well, what's the other one? You know, doing what you've always done and expecting a different result yeah. is, is a definition of insanity. Insanity, isn't it? yeah. It's crazy. So, and it, is, it is mad. So, yeah, surround yourself. I, I love that. I mean, it, it's something we could talk about all day. Yeah. You know, we could do a whole podcast just on the value of hanging out with, with other people. But I love this principle that... It's not that innovative. No. You know, it's been around since 19... When was uh, Think and Grow Rich written? I think it's 1912 was the Mm. first time it was penned um, as a principle, you know, a whole Mm. chapter in his book, Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, uh, that principle of, you know, mastermind, of having Mm. different minds to yours, making a greater consciousness than one of your own. And we've all had it. We've all been in environments where you're in the pub and... Well, not just in the pub, it could be anywhere, but you know, maybe you've been in the pub. And <laughs> you've been in the pub. I've been in the pub. <laughs> and, and, you know, someone's told a joke and it kind of just goes round and it gets bigger in the telling mm. as, as you're saying it and it gets funnier and funnier and funnier mm. and funnier. And you kind of had to be there. But it's almost like there was a an ineffable extra mind in the room that was mm. feeding that. Mm. Does, that, does that kind of make sense? You yeah. kind of, I think we've all had those little moments, yeah. not, not just in the pub. but. Yeah. You know, we've experienced it in in, uh, rooms on client days Mm -hmm. where people have grabbed an idea and then somebody else has added to it and then somebody else has gone, well, what about this? Yeah. This is how we do it. And they go, oh, my God, God, that's so obvious but never even crossed my mind. mind. There's the power. That's the power of it, yeah. So. Okay, number two. Number two. You said you had a couple, yeah. I've got five. Wow. Failure is not a bad thing but fail fast and often. And that builds on what we were talking about Um the other week about decision making and it not being a right or wrong decision but just a decision but just make the decision and if you if it's going to fail that's okay because you learn something from it and you can take what you've learned and change what you're going to do for the better that makes it more likely to succeed in the future okay so so it was it was last last week's episode wasn't it we talked at length about this principle of decision decision making making. step Taking. Yeah, step taking. Step We're going taking. to call it step taking now. Yeah, rather than decision making. So if, if you want, if you haven't yet listened to it. Yeah, go um, back and listen to Go back and listen making. to last week's, I think it's episode 25 maybe, um, that where we talk at length about why maybe the word decision is not the word, right word to use. Decision making as a principle is one that can be seen as something that's final and ultimate. And actually what we maybe need to think of it as as steps mm. in a longer journey and when you start thinking it as steps and it's less final maybe it's easier to make decisions quicker but the, this this principle you're talking about here uh which kind of links into that is is one of f- failing fast is what yeah yeah their, their whole ethos was if you're failing then you're growing because you're moving forward you're making more decisions and even if even or taking more steps. Knowing what doesn't work <laughs> is just as important as knowing what does, does work. work. And how you can learn And how from you those. learn from the things that don't work to make the things that do work be- bigger and better. Okay. And do any of those, did, did you, through listening to those talks, did anybody have a culture where not, f- where failure, not failing, Mm-hmm. Get this right, where mm-hmm. failure was encouraged, yeah. deliberately encouraged. Yeah. Almost all of the small innovative co- companies encourage failure. And did they have any kind of uh, ideas of how they structured that? You know, did they put a failure budget in place, for instance, or w- w- was there um, an opportunity to go? Don't know what's that we the got craziest into the- idea you've yeah. got. Let's explore it. I don't know that they got into that much detail. These these talks were only kind of 20, 30 right. minutes long. But in, in essence, what I was hearing from a lot of them is 
It's a culture that they encourage within their companies that failing is not a bad thing. Trying, not trying is a bad thing, but trying and it not working out is a great thing because, and I think it was Thomas Edison, there's, I haven't had, was it 10,000 failures? Yeah. I've just had 999,000 that didn't work yeah. and now I know yeah. which I, does. Nobody so, actually knows whether he had, it took him a thousand or 10,000-ish iterations. The principle's there, the though. Principle's it's there. just, yeah, you know, think however many, a thousand things that haven't worked out yet. Yeah, we would and, never have had Velcro if it wasn't for a mistake. Exactly. So... So and and that's and that's part of the thing is you know they've they've tried things which maybe haven't worked but they've discovered something else in the process of doing that and it's almost like a little ideas bank where they've gone okay that didn't work for this thing that we're working on right now but let's park that and put it in the pot mm. and we'll come back to that at some point for something else yeah. but all of them were it's not a bad thing we that all of them had a culture of we expect to fail we expect failure as part, part of our of innovation process process we are going to fail and failing is not bad but let's not linger over it let's fail pick yourself up move on it's not a bad thing let's not beat ourselves up about it let's just do it doesn't work out great next thing try that yeah. doesn't work out great next thing so we've spoken I, d- I don't know if we've spoken on the podcast about it if we have i don't, I don't know if remember. we have talked about failure. about failure we must have that for a future episode yeah i mean i know that in I think it was February this year, we ran, um, uh, you know, a roundtable day with I don't know fourteen, fifteen clients where the topic was failure, mm. and there was some really interesting discussion. Um, some people were actually really negative about even when I kind of presented the topic. There were some people who went, oh. We're not going to talk about failure, are we? Well, I don't want to talk about failure because then it might become real. So mm. I'm not even going to face it. I'm not even going to talk about it because I don't believe in the word and I don't fail. People do fail mm. all the time. And it was a fascinating discussion. And I, do, I think you're right. That's definitely an area that we could talk about mm. in a future podcast. So listen out for that one yeah. as well. But the principle was from... Fail fast. From just fail. Failure is not a bad thing. But just get it done. Move get on, on the bike, fall over, push yep. yourself over. Get back on the get bike. Get back on the bike. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Number three was be willing to take a risk. And that fo- follows mm. on from failure because it is a risk to try anything. And some of that, you know, the risk, the, the fear that we feel about taking a risk is to do with failure because we're frightened it's not going to work out. And I guess that links into this principle of not um, headaching over yeah deci- decisions yeah because u- ultimately we we agonize yeah that's a better word than headache <laughs> i made up you are making up words word now <laughs> again so yeah a- a- agonizing over whether a, you should be taking a decision or taking a step got to reprogram my head around that a little bit <laughs> but whether we should be taking a stop step because if it fails what do i do with that actually mm. it is just one step um and, and I think running a business is, sorry, rephrase that, running and growing or growing a business is risk. Mm. It's just, I don't think anybody has the formula no. um, for, we, we were here a few months ago and we recorded an episode about a book that I picked off the shelf here, didn't mm-hmm. I? And that was all about basically the 12 things you need to do to run your perfect business. I can't remember what it was called now, but it had the word success and secrets and business in it sort of type thing. And and all very obvious, and, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But if it was that easy, then every single one of us could just pick up the book that's written you know, how, how to build your coaching business in 12 easy steps, yeah. how to build your ice skating clothing business yeah. in 12 easy steps. And every business would look the same and, and do the same and, and sound so, the same. So by its very nature, that there is going to be risk because there is no manual. No. There are principles uh, and there's no question that, you know, you, for example, you know, the obvious one is if you, you're not profitable, you're going to struggle, mm-hmm. you're going to die at some point. Um Cash is king. We all know that. Well, cash flow is mm-hmm. king. We know that. Um, and we can go on. But you still have to be able to apply those principles. Yep. And understanding that means that 
every time you apply it, you are taking a risk because mm-hmm. the market changes, the the the, peop- the the people's attitudes change, the climate changes, which affects people's attitudes. Yep. There are unseen circumstances, yeah, all sorts of stuff that mm-hmm. you know you you can be planning a big launch one day, and the next day, you know something happens. You know, and and you've got to completely change your plans mm-hmm. for 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 that for that day. And and I think you know we part of the joy of running a business is you get to be flexible and you get to be agile. Yeah. But it inherently carries risk. Yeah, of course. But yeah, again, risk mm. is not a bad thing. No. Um, number four was learn from other industries. So all of these innovation companies, they're all focused on innovation and the, the next technology. Um, all of them look outside of their immediate industry to see what other companies who are at that kind of forward leading edge are doing in their industries. Not because they're going to produce the same product or service. How, how, how can we make that work for us? But yeah, how can we take the principles <clears throat> of what they're doing or what they've learned or how they're doing something and make that work for us? So I think that the thing that I took away from that was just like, you know, it's very easy to go and look at what my com- immediate competitors Messages. are doing and I'll try and outsmart them, yeah. do better, have a better product or be cheaper or whatever it is. But actually taking a step outside of that and going, well, what, what are comparable companies but in totally different industries, what are they doing? I, I've, I've learned as much from spending time and watching people from completely different businesses and mm. industries to mine uh, as I have other mm. coaching businesses. And I think that's the fascinating thing when we um, sit in locker room days is they are from a complete oh, so sub- cross-section of companies and positions and, and stages of business, but they all come together and have valuable input to make um, you know, well, for the whole day. It's, I, and, it's and I think really a, interesting. It's, 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 I find it fascinating. I always come away going, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> but the, I think there's a deeper thing here as well. I mean, most people will be aware of the Pareto rule, mm-hmm. the 80 20 rule, as it's mm-hmm. known, um, which was kind of researched and given a name by, I can't remember his first name, but Mr. Pareto. Pareto. <laughs> <laughs> I presume it's his surname, anyway. But uh, the, the basic principle, if you haven't come across the, the Pareto rule, is that you get. Um, 80% of your results, if you like, from 20% of your activity. And, and this, is, this research was not just business-based, but you know, um, kind of globally based on all sorts of behaviours. Mm. So 80% of the world's wealth is held by 20% of the world's population, yeah. for example. Um, 80% of the world's academics come from 20% of the world's universities, so mm. on and so forth. There's all these different these principles. So if you look at your own industry, the likelihood is that 80% of the people in your industry, okay, are... If 80% of the results in your industry are coming from 20% of the practitioners within your industry, mm-hmm. then 80% of the practitioners in your industry are not delivering the right thing. They're not doing it right yeah. because they're only delivering 20% of the results. Does mm-hmm. that, does that yeah. make sense? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, in your, it, it, it's, so if you look around you in your industry, the vast majority of people are not ones you want to learn from mm. because your job has to be to find the 20%. 20%, yeah. The trouble with that is is that the likelihood is is that 20% are so successful that they're too difficult to put yourself in front of and learn from. Mm. And the 80% are much easier to put yourself in front of because they're yeah. in the same spaces that you are. And I'm mm. not saying that you're not successful, but yeah. if, you know, the, the fact that you're looking to learn means that you're more likely to be successful. So, But it's much easier to find the 20% from other industries mm-hmm. because they won't see you as a threat yeah. or as a competitor. So and often this is where you can potentially get some mentoring. You know, there's yeah. lots of mentoring schemes out there, but often the mentors don't want to mentor someone directly within their industry because sometimes it's competitive happens. sometimes happens yeah. you do get them but it's it's 
it's, and, and, and even if you even if uh, and I, I would take the sort of I would stretch it one step further in that you may not learn a huge amount from the 80% of people in your own industry who are delivering 20% of the result and therefore mm. doing some things not as well as it could be but because it's not your industry you will learn a hell of a lot from the 80% in other industries mm. because it's just different yeah completely different so I, I really I really I like that so yeah a lot and then the last one was figure out where the money's coming from because free is bad <laughs> And all of these innovation companies, they're not just doing this because, you know, they're tech heads and they like playing with new technology. They're doing it because ultimately they want to sell this product. So they need to, there's no point in developing the product or service unless they understand who's going to pay for it. Because then they can go after those sales. Yeah. And, and I, They don't work for free. No, don't work for free. And it, it, it is fascinating that because <clears throat> I work with a company over the last four months five months and they've got a tech product they're doing it's not something i normally do but it was through the mentoring scheme i'm part of so i'm ended up working with them and it's been it's been good fun and there is a there is a block Mm -hmm. within this business around selling it yeah they're putting all their investment all their energy all their efforts into making this product lovelier lovelier it's saleable right now Mm -hmm. it's been saleable for months they haven't made a sale yeah, they've had 170 people put their hands up and go. When it's ready, I'm I'd be interested. I'm interested now, even though you haven't built it. They haven't had a single conversation with those 170 people, which is where the money is coming from. Yeah. To say, hey, we've built it. If you pay us something, we can build it faster. Yep. Yeah. Would you like to be a beta tester? You be a beta tester. Be an price. early adopter. Yeah. Whatever it is, come on board. Go on the journey yeah. with us. Or be even braver and go. Yeah. It's ready to buy. They give you the money, build it. Yeah. And that is what a lot of these technology companies are doing. They're not actually, I mean, they, they might have ideas because they're technical people, but they're not starting the development process mm. until they've identified where the money's coming from and got an order. And then they go, great, we've got the money to pay someone to build it now. There's, it's absolutely no different to, you know, these, these water bottles that we've got and we have other bits and pieces that are branded, mm. for instance. You know, we buy them. And at the point of purchase, they're then branded for us. Mm. But th- th- they figured out that the money is going to come from me and I trust them to deliver on the product. Yeah. I don't w- I don't say to them, brand it first and then I'll pay you. Mm-hmm. Does that yeah. make sense? It's yeah. the same, and it ha- your, your old business, exactly yeah. the same. People bought stuff on trust yeah. that you would deliver the garment that they picked, embroidered, yeah. branded personalized yep they didn't ask you to do all of the work no. and then go mm, actually i don't like it well you think about or i do like it any any retail product that you buy you don't get the product and then pay for it you don't you don't pay for the cinema after you've watched the, the film, film. Well, that was a bit rubbish i'm not paying you don't <laughs> yeah you don't buy the you don't get the clothes and then pay for them afterwards interesting i love that yeah F- figure out where the money's coming from because you don't want to work for free. So I'll, I'll just, I'll summarise them just yes, because we've yes. wrapped it up with discussion. we'll put them in the show notes We'll put them well. in the show notes as well. But number one was surround yourself with multidisciplinary teams from all levels to get uh, varied ideas and input. Number two was failure is not a bad thing, but fail fast and often. Mm-hmm. Three was be willing to take a risk. Four, learn from other industries. And five, figure out where the money is coming from because free is bad. Free is bad. Remember that, people? Free is bad. Free is bad. Yeah. Brilliant. Have anybody's got any others they'd add yeah. to that? But obviously they're learnings that yeah, I mean, are, you know. are noticed across and I don't I don't to be honest, most of those you could argue were principles yeah, hundred years ago, too. Exactly. Years they're ago, not they're not specific ago. to innovation. That's what I thought was so interesting mm. about it actually, was actually You've got global are, tech companies yeah. that are seeing the same patterns in exactly. for success. As solopreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that and that that's the real lesson to be learned here is that there's nothing yeah. new. You you've just got to understand what the principles are, mm. understand the rules of the game, and then and then go out and actually apply it because that's how you win. If, yeah. if you, and if you don't apply it, and if you, if you don't take those little risks, and mm. you don't you're not prepared to fail, 
um, often. If you don't hang around with the right people, if you don't allow yourself to be challenged, mm. you're 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 just not you're not going to get to where you want to get to. Yep, absolutely. Brilliant. I'll see you next week. See you next week. Thank you.